Hi everyone, thank you so much for watching. Today's video is a premonition, or is it going to happen, or is it really already happening, about banks, ATMs, and apps. Now, one thing I do know for certain, because today is a lot of hypotheses, today is theories day, because I don't know if all oh, this is going to really happen. But one thing I do know for sure is recently I paid my car registration. Thankfully, because I'm appreciative about everything, my registration falls <laughs> on the 24th of December every year. The day before Christmas, I've got to pay about 320 bucks to, for my car to be registered for six months. So I've got the receipt here. Now, if you have a look at this, I'm used to credit card, so I've taken out my credit card information. So here's my receipt from where I've paid my card registration. So there's my reference number. I took out my credit card. There's the amount that I paid. But look at this. I want you to really look at this. Credit card surcharge, $1.86. So that $1.86... On top of what I paid, so there's the product amount, plus the $1.86 equals this that I've just paid on my credit card. Okay? And it's also got their information about my car, which you don't need to know. But that $1.86, now that doesn't sound too much, right? But let's do some maths. $1.86. Now, I live in Queensland where there's probably, I don't know, let's just round it up a little bit, 5 million registered cars. So we multiply by 5 million. Now, this is only six months registration, remember. That becomes $9,300,000 who got that? And I know who got that. It wasn't me who gets that amount. It's the banks because it's their surcharge. A dollar eighty-six multiplied by say five million cars in Queensland, which there easily would be. Look how many people have got two or three vehicles. Then you've got the trucks and you've got the government, the company cars, etc. They all pay by their corporate credit cards. So they're all paying corporate fees back to the bank. And this is where I'm going today with the banks. It's all these hidden fees and charges that they have out there that we've got to look at and be aware of what they're doing to us. So with regards to banks, I always say, try to get your money out. Cash is king, okay? Cash is king. We've got to start spending our money. So they use this example. Now, this is not my example here, but this is how they say it. If I have a $50 note, which I don't have a note on me at this point, but I'll just use a piece of, I'll just use a piece of, a piece of paper, and I'll put $50 on it, right? So it's a $50 note with a nice, I'm just going to draw a little love heart on there because they always have people's names on there. And then down the bottom of your bank note, there's always a serial number. So it's a $50 note. So if I give this to my grocery store when I buy their um, vegetables, their produce, that guy then holds a physical $50 note. But if I pay with my card, he has to pay that $1.86. So this $50 is now only, oh, let's do, it on the, let's do it on my calculator. So my $50 note, whoops, $50 note, minus $1.86. So he's really now only got um, 48.14. So I'm going to write that down, 48.14. So then he's got that 48.15. So then he has to go and... With that, he's got to pay somebody. So he may be doing a card transaction to pay his staff. So he's got to pay another dollar eighty-six. So now we minus a dollar eighty-six. So now he's down to really forty-six dollars and twenty-eight cents. 
So then, after that, he might actually have to go and buy groceries himself. So he goes into the grocery store with my $50, and which is now on his card. He buys his own milk, bread, whatever. So he's now paying another. So we minus, again, another dollar eighty-six. So now that $50 is now only worth $44.42. He's already lost nearly $5 of it, which is 10%. $5 out of 50 is 10%. So it's not like saying, oh, we've just got to pay $1.86. It's now up to 10%. And that's only with two or three transactions. So imagine if somebody uses their credit card every day where they go to this shop and they buy something for $5, eighty-six. thank you very much. Then they go to that shop and they buy a dress, eighty-six. thank you very much. Then they go over to this place and they buy some groceries, eighty-six. thank you very much for using your card. Now, the bank loves it because they're getting all these um, charges that we're charging, we're paying. So my suggestion is take out your $50 note out of the bank and be aware of ATMs, which is my next one. ATMs, ba um, banks, ATMs and apps. So when you go to an ATM, don't just take out $100 each day because I went to an ATM here the other day and they charged $3. Now, that's not going to the bank, thank you very much. Well, it may be going to a bank, but generally it's to a business who runs that ATM. They, they're privately owned, the ATMs, unless you go to like the big banks where they have their name all over it because of the ATMs at their branch, right? So they get those that $3 as well. So now we're not talking about $1.84 anymore. Now we're talking $3. So if someone uses an ATM three times a week, that's virtually $9 just going to the bank there. So $9 a week, that's making now for $36 a month. In a year, that's $360. More like going up to nearly $400 that, that that bank has just made with you using an ATM. So stop using ATMs as often. I say it like this, me personally, when I go to an ATM, I take out all the money I've got. I leave in there the money for direct debits, which I have to have, because um, that's the way that they take money out of the account. And there's always um, direct debit charges as well, so I don't even like doing direct debits. But I'll take out my money once every fortnight, and I live on cash. So yes, I've paid that $3, but... I go to maybe the grocery store today, then I'll buy petrol, then I'll go and um, get something from that shop, then I go over to that shop, then I go to that shop. So in two weeks, I might go to 10 places. So my $3, so $1.89, if I was using, if I was using my card everywhere I went, 10 times in a week, okay, 10, seven days a week, it's very feasible that some people do to use their card once or twice a day. You go to work, you pay for parking, so you tap your card. Then you go and you've got to have lunch somewhere, so you tap your card at the restaurant. Then after work, you think, oh, you don't need petrol. So you've tapped three times that day. So that just one day, you've just spent $5.86 just on paying the bank. So multiply that by seven, if you do it seven days a week, $40 a week you're paying, not the bank is giving you. You're paying the bank. So now we multiply that by four for a month. So there's a month. And now we multiply that by 12 months. $1,905. That's if we use our card three times a day. That's how much you've paid in your fees. Wow. So why do you think I'm saying don't use your card? Use cash. Because that money is better in your pocket at this point, isn't it? Especially now when we've got, um, I'm not going to say who, but we've got stores <laughs> now getting investigated for price gouging. Okay. Why would you want to spend your 
money at places where they're deliberately putting the prices up when they know people are poor. So don't don't use your ATM all the time. Just use it once. Take out all your money and then use money everywhere you go. Okay. Now let's look at apps. Oh my God, this is the scariest one. Apps. I got this thing the other day. Oh my God, are you ready for this photo? I play games at night time. So here's all my games, okay? I like playing um, Free Cell, Blackjack, um, sorry, not Blackjack, Block Udu, Jigsaw, Wordscape, Black, Backgammon, Spider Solitaire, Yuka. So there's my games on my phone that I play. These are apps, okay? Now, whenever I download those, the first thing it says is, do you give us permission to access? What? No, I don't. Okay, I don't. But guess what? They still do. Because I can be playing like Block Udo, which I love Block Udo, right? And we get all these ads coming up. And these ads are all relevant for what I've used in Google. Huh. How did they know? Unless they're tracking what I do in Google. So whenever we use apps, like game apps, etc., you know, because I just like playing, you know, I actually like backgammon. If you don't know what backgammon is, okay, I like backgammon. And it's through Optime software because they access everything. Okay, and look, I get dresses because the other night I was looking at dresses. And that's the ad that's popped up. So who's this? Timu. Now, let's go there with apps because they're the ones that I'm going to be talking about. So remember, if I say the one that I was talking about earlier, this one. This one, okay? Where's the word? Oh, yeah, there it is. Just little, little, little at the bottom. Okay, so we don't want to use that one, okay? We really don't want to use that one. There it is. Who's ever seen that? Now, it says get. I say get stuffed. That's what I say personally, get stuffed. I'm not using that. So I'll talk about that one in a minute. But when we use apps, they all talk to each other. They all access every other thing on your phone. Now, there's some apps out there. They access your contact list. They will access your internet banking. So if you log into your bank on your phone, they know your access code, your bank account numbers, they know your passwords, they know your log, they know your email addresses. Oh looky! My friend showed me the other day. <coughs> oh my god, this is gonna get you. Let me just have a cup of tea. She had to update her outlook, terms and conditions. Guess what it said? Now, I've seen this. Oh, it's verified. Go research it if you use Hotmail. Hotmail.com, Gmail.com, they're all the same. So I'm not going to surmise which one it is, but I'll tell you what they do. In the terms and conditions of this certain app, it said, we can access your email. We can authorize emails to be written on your behalf. In other words, you don't even know the AI has written an email and sent from your email box. Try and prove that one in court that you didn't do it. And it also deletes emails that it doesn't think suits your purpose. What? What? So it writes, deletes, and knows every email you write. What? It can write emails and send them from your inbox. So imagine now if you're in court and the judge says, prosecution, please show us all the evidence that this person's done for this crime. And the prosecution comes forward and she, they say, well, she emailed this person and told her she was going to do this. And you're looking at this email. What? I didn't write that. How do you prove that to a judge and jury? when they're accessing all our stuff through apps. So my advice, which I do, I'm not telling you not to do it, stop using apps, okay? I've got an app for my bank, but I will never 
use it because I've got more than one bank. I've got a business, uh, well, I've got business and then I've also got my normal where I bank, pay my bills. So I don't want them talking to each other, okay? But then just today, now I want to show you just what happened today. Now this is today at 11.22 a.m. Have a read of this. Now, there's a message ID. They know my name, dear Linda. Now, this is from our Australian Electoral Commission, which I have not told yet that I've moved house. Dear Linda, the Australian Electoral Commission is contacting you because we have information indicating you need to check your enrolment. Here in Australia, it is legal to vote. You have to vote by law, right? Either you are not enrolled to vote or your enrolment details may be out of date. This may be because you have changed your name or address. The great majority of eligible people in your area are enrolled to vote. Please visit today to enroll or update your enrolment details. Remember that enrolment and voting are compulsory by law. Now, to me, that's that little bit. Now, this is how I take this personally. That's that little bit of, let's just go there. That's that coercion. You know what I mean? Remember. So they're throwing it in my face. Remember that enrolment and voting are compulsory by law. So there it is, it's straight from the Electoral Commission that I got today. So scroll up to the top, there's the Australian Electoral Commission. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm feeling a little bit upset about that. How did they know that I'm not on the Electoral Commission because I moved and I haven't told them yet? So who are they accessing information from where I've updated my new address because I've moved three months ago? Huh. I think I know who's talking to who, okay? So this is what I personally don't like happening now. I don't like that when I go onto Google and I look at dresses for sale, I then get pop-ups when I'm playing backgammon at night. I get pop-ups for Timu. Here's some nice new dresses, very cheap. Why are they very cheap? Because they want you to buy it. Now, these dresses that I've seen off Timo, the ones that I've seen people order, they're not very good quality. The sizes are up the heck. And I, I've looked at their reviews, and I'm not very happy with what I'm seeing there as a consumer. But everyone's got their choice to buy what they want, right? Not everyone likes Chinese food, okay? So other people prefer Italian, okay? So we all have our right to do what we want. But at the end of the day, when I find out that Timo is accessing everything on your phone, apparently, because I don't use Timo to know this, but I saw a video where a lady was showing the terms and conditions of Timo. And if you haven't read those terms and conditions and you're using Timo, you better go read your terms and conditions of finding out what that app is accessing on your phone without your consent or knowledge. And this is where all apps are now doing it. Now for the scary part. Are you ready for the scary part? China, apparently, this is hearsay because I haven't verified this, but apparently China has now stopped the internet. The only way you can access the internet in China is by using apps. So they can't Google stuff. They can't research stuff. They can't go into Google and put in what are the side effects of this medical procedure. Because the government doesn't want them to find out. So they have to go through a health app where it's going to be all that stuff that they want you to know. You following me? So the more we use apps, the more we're losing our control of what we can access on the internet. So 
I always say Google will be turned now this is one of my prophecies Google will be turned off all our search engines are about to be turned off the only way you can access anything on the internet is through an app the more we use apps the worse it's going to be because it accesses everything even when we don't give them permission to do it that's how I feel about this that's my personal opinion and I think I'm right to say that I'm not showing verified evidence of this I'm not saying that it's real it may be just something I've my brain has fabricated here and I'm happy to say Linda you're a cuckoo today cuckoo cuckoo you're going cuckoo because all this information but at the end of the day what if I'm right at the end of the day what if they do turn off your internet and all you can access is an app how are you going to feel then after it's done how are you going to be the day that they say oh there's no more money now you've got to pay a dollar 86 every time that you use your credit card or your ATM card FPOS card whatever you want to call it oh and don't worry about fines you know back in the 1996 I watched an episode of um, Sequest DSV it had Roy Schreider in it in the episode Roy's racing he's on his motorbike and he's racing to get to his submarine now this is from 1996 he goes through a speed camera and there's a little girl in the control room and she says hello is this the registered vehicle of ABC 123 Roy Schreider's there with his helmet on he's getting this voice and he's through his helmet and he says yes I'm the registered owner and then goes back to the girl in the control room and she says well we've just detected your speeding we've just taken 328 credits out of your account straight away instantly no way of appealing no way of saying oh I can't pay it today I'll get paid next week nothing just done instantly now so later in the episode he tries to buy a drink and guess what no funds available because it's already come out of his account I can see this as clear as day as a psychic of which of what's coming we must fight this every chance we get the more we say no the more we stand up and I feel personally you know go and check me out on YouTube on Facebook Linda Ray R-A-E is my name Linda L-Y-N-D-A R-A-E okay go look at what I share on Facebook if you want to know some stuff now I'm going to go in to me okay damn it I wanted to share I think I did share that okay so if you go into me here's me I'm wearing a little red t-shirt oh actually it's this one <laughs> I'm wearing a little red t-shirt with my sunglasses whoops let me go back in there go there Linda Ray is me I've got an open I don't have security on my Facebook because I want people to see what I'm talking about I've just shared this Wow because we're now talking about turbo cancers health okay um I'm talking about this one where millions just turned up millions just turned up on the news it said less than 10,000 by the way does that look like 10,000 people to you <laughs> oh my god we've got to be aware use our intuition and most of all stay one step ahead of what's going on guys follow me for more um hope you like my content i'm going to start doing some more videos about heaven shortly too thank you so much for watching i'll talk to you all soon make your own mind up thanks for watching bye